lagging behind a little bit. Hello and welcome to Bowling Green, Kentucky, where today's matchup we have the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers taking on the Chattanooga Mox. Scram Doty, Brandon Dowdy, happy to be with you. And Brandon, this should be a fun matchup between these two teams meeting for the first time since 2007. Yeah, it should be. Uh, I'm excited to see what Chattanooga's has on offense, on defense, on special teams. This is their first game and their only game of the fall season, so I'm excited to see uh, what kind of trick plays we got up our sleeves today. Because if I was the coach, that's all I'd be running. You're a former quarterback. Let's take a look at the quarter, uh, quarterback matchups that we have in store this afternoon in this game. Yeah, for WKU, it's Kavaris, Kavarius Th Thomas. He's a big, arm, strong kid from Lakeland, Florida. He doesn't look like a quarterback. He looks like a dang tight end. So uh, I'm excited to see him see him sling the ball up and down the field. He's got a really strong arm. Uh, coach, coach does a good job of protecting him and, and making sure he, he makes plays with his feet and his arm. He's a kind of a mo multiple, ki multiple kid. He can do it both ways, running the ball and throwing it, making his second career start on the hill. Uh, I would love to see his pr production from game one to game two, and I'm excited to see that today. We'll step aside, and when we come back, we'll have kickoff between Western Kentucky and Chattanooga. Welcome back to Bowling Green as we get ready for the first game of the season for Chattanooga. This will be game number six for the Hilltoppers. 14th meeting all time between these two teams. Chattanooga is eight and five all time against Western Kentucky. Chattanooga won the coin toss and the mocks won the football. So Chattanooga getting ready to take the field for a game for the first time in 336 days. It's the longest layoff that Chattanooga has had since the 1943-1944 seasons, which were postponed due to, due to World War II. Wow. So it's been a minute. That is incredible. I've never heard that before in my life. That is unbelievable. I, I mean, I can't imagine, I can't imagine the amount of energy, the amount of excitement, and how they're going to have to bottle that up and play a football game today. Corey Munson kicks it deep for Western Kentucky. And a fair catch is signaled as it's reeled in five yards deep in the back of the end zone for a touchback. So here's a look at the Chattanooga offense. Drayton Arnold is an Old Dominion transfer. He's a senior from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Already has two degrees, and he accomplished that in two and a half years. So he starts the one and only game in the fall for Chattanooga. He attempted 10 passes a season ago for 36 yards. I'll be interested to see first play what they do with the old, young quarterback, <laughs> unexperienced quarterback, to kind of keep him confident and keep him in a rhythm here early. This is a Chattanooga offensive line, 56 combined starts. And how about this? They start off with a pass that is incomplete, looking for its top target in Bryce Nunnally. Yeah, Nunnally's on pace to break all of T.O., the real T.O., uh, Terrell Owens' records today, and I'm excited to see him play uh, and line up. He's a, he'll be a slot kid, so he'll do a bunch of different things on offense for him. Keep an eye on Nunnally and the running back Ford coming back from a season-ending injury late last year. And here is a handoff to Ford. Powers his way for a short pickup to bring up third and long for Chattanooga. A little outside zone there. You know, I think that the difference in this game is, and I know we've said it already ten times, but Chattanooga is playing in their first game of the fall, so they're really playing at practice speed. Look to see them try to adjust throughout the game to pick up the speed of game five like the Hilltoppers are on. That will be something to watch throughout the course of this game, just how smooth will this offense and defense be for Chattanooga throughout the course of this contest. Absolutely. Had a scrimmage a couple of weeks ago leading up to this contest. The Mocs facing their first third down, and it's a busted play. Ford wasn't there, and diving for the first down, it's Drayton Arnold. 
Looked like it was going to be a disaster, Brandon, and he runs for a first down. Yeah, they need to put that in the playbook. I mean, fake left, go right, go left, go right, go back to a great play. That's that is if you have a young freshman quarterback and you were the hole was, just followed the hole in there, running that little outside zone to the right, kind of a, a repeat pay from second down. Um, really good play, good play by a, a young old quarterback in Arnold. That summer's in motion. And on first and 10, back on the ground of Ford. Ford, the SoCon freshman of the year last year, picks up five on first down. It's interesting to see in this game, or even just early, just how much success Chattanooga's had running that outside zone. It looks like that's going to be their staple. A uh, year, year ago, the inside zone was their staple. Now they're running a little more outside zone to start this game, uh, getting everybody. It's a little bit easier to communicate. Uh, you can kind of just run a play and don't have to worry about what the defense is doing. So very smart coaching early on. This is a Chattanooga team a season ago, went 6-6 six and six under first-year head coach Rusty Wright. Back on the ground of Ford. He's got a first down and more as he rumbles his way into Hilltopper territory. Somebody lost a helmet in the process. That was Antoine Kincaid, the safety, and a powerful first down run for Ford. That's got to feel good for Ford coming off an ACL surgery, um, getting getting licked up for the first time in over a year. Uh, so I, I feel, feel for him. I've had one myself, so I know all the, the steps that go through having an ACL. Yeah, he tore his ACL in the first quarter on November 9th against Sanford. Still rushed for over 1,000 yards last year and had nine touchdowns on the ground. They feed him again and again trying to bounce it out. Side picks up a gain of three. Chattanooga early in this game is controlling the line of scrimmage. You know, if you watch a football game in a beautiful press box like I am, you can see the, the uh, an offense and defensive line if you're watching a team. If the offensive line beats a defensive line one and a half yards over on the other side of their ball, they're winning the battle up front. And you can see it perfectly on every run play they've had this so far. Chattanooga has beaten Western a yard and a half behind them where they are. Nunnally is in the slot. On second and seven, Arnold will foe over the middle, and it is caught by his tight end. Trying to fight for the first down, he will be tackled about a yard and a half shy. So that's Chris James, his first catch of the season for the senior. He was a quarterback in JUCO at Hutchinson Community College in Kansas, and they flipped him over to tight end, and all he did was lead all the tight ends in receiving touchdowns last year. And how about this tempo, and Arnold falls forward for a first down. I really like the, the mix of play calls uh, offensive coordinator Pizzo, he's, he's doing a really good job of uh, getting his quarterback in rhythm, but staying ahead of the sticks. They're, they've done an amazing job on first and second down, other than the first third down of the game, there's a broken play. But they've done a really good job getting really successful, getting four or five yards on first and second down and keeping them ahead and being in these third and manageable spots. This is Price in the backfield, and his first carry of the day results in a short pickup of two. Tyrell Price, a senior from Abbeville, Mississippi. He was second team all conference two years ago. Missed most of last year with an injury. Interesting to see Hilltopper's defense is starting to bring a little bit more pressure, uh, which is expected where they're at on the field. So uh, bring a little more pressure. It's actually brought a corner blitz on that one. They ran right into it. Uh, look for a little play action here, uh, just anticipating. Arnold with a clean pocket, connects with Nunnally. His first catch of the day results in a first down, and Brandon, that ties him with Terrell Owens. Wow. Like we said, receptions. Like we said, he's, he's right on brink. The kids had so much production uh, talking to coaches earlier this week. They're just so intrigued by how much he loves this game of football and how, how much time and work he puts in. Uh, you, you wouldn't even know he's a, court, uh, a receiver. Uh, if you saw him around campus. So uh, he, he just does a really good job of the way he takes care of his body, takes care of himself. So he's a really impressive player. I'm looking forward to seeing him, seeing him a little bit more action as the game goes on. That's him in motion on first and 10. A big hole up the middle for Price, and Price will be met by Devin Key around the nine-yard line, a pickup of 13 on the first down run for Price. It looks like the Chattanooga offense has got Clayton White and the Hilltoppers 
uh, kind of guessing here early in this game. Uh, great game plan. You script your first 10 plays most of the time in college football. They script the first 10 plays. Looks like they got off script a little bit just based on situation, but uh, really stuck with it. I really like this game plan. You can see that they've been prepping for more than one week for this game. That was actually forward on the carry, so it's first and goal. It's a low snap, and Arnold will just fall on top of it. And this will back up the mocks about three yards. It'll be interesting to see if Chattanooga can, there's going to be first game jitters. There's going to be first game mistakes, penalties, how they're going to bounce back from things like that. First drive of the game, first third down of the game. They have a broken play that turns into a first down. Now on, on first down in the red zone, critical time to get a dropped snap. check with me here trying to play a little mind game offense and defense coordinator another handoff to Ford and Ford works his way inside the 10 Outs tackled by Devin Key outside zone again uh, again I think it was a great call uh, getting ahead of the chick chains a little bit making up the the lost yardage from the fumbled snap and now they're back in a third and ten would like to see Arnold early in this game. First drive, in my opinion, it's either touchdown or check down. Do not uh, force the ball in here. It's the first drive of the game. Keep your confidence. You don't want to give the Hilltoppers any momentum uh, after having a good drive on first drive of the game. This is where Chattanooga likes to go to their tight end, James. Arnold will step up in the pocket. He's got some room up the middle, and he takes it inside the end zone. What an opening drive for Chattanooga. Fantastic opening drive and a fantastic play call. Um, had everybody thinking it was going to be uh, all goes on the outside. Ran a design quarterback run with your running back leading the charge. Phenomenal, phenomenal call on third, third and long. Hilltoppers didn't even see it coming. Brandon, that was a 14-play, 75-yard drive that took 7 minutes and 16 seconds. I think the most impressive part of that drive was that they had two miscues on the drive, and they still were able to bounce back off those miscues, harness the energy, and make plays. Extra points is good. Chattanooga could not start it any better. Mox lead the Hilltoppers. Well, 7.44 remaining in the opening quarter. 7-0, Chattanooga on top. Chattanooga leads Western Kentucky 7-0 with 7.44 in the first quarter. And what an opening drive. Yeah, what an opening drive. Great calls, great mix. Uh, had the defense guessing the entire drive. Uh, I thought it was a fantastic drive uh, from Chattanooga, just getting their guys going, getting their quarterback in rhythm. It's a short kick, and it is brought in by the backup tight end, Stephen Wachowski. And this will be excellent field position coming up for West Kentucky for their opening drive. So a lot of questions about the quarterback position leading up to this game. And it is the redshirt sophomore out of Lakeland, Florida. Kavaris Thomas earned his first career start against a very good UAB defense last week. Threw two touchdowns, but also had two interceptions. And the Hilltoppers. Here's a read option for Thomas. Not much there at all. Chattanooga all over that one. A lot of reading going on in that first play of the game. Actually, as a quarterback, ex-quarterback, I kind of liked getting hit on the first play. Got my jitters off, so uh, KT takes a hit there and uh, gets down one of the other keys I had for this game was the Hilltoppers had to be really a lot better on first down. And, from the start, not so good. See if they can make it up on second. It's a chilly Saturday afternoon in Bowling Green. Temperatures around 50 degrees as Gage Walker bounces it outside in a powerful run down inside the 30. First touch of the game for Gage Walker results in a huge play and a first down for the Hilltoppers. Just a one back power. Uh, what they've scored on here, the home opener last year, they hope oh, scored out on a 70 yard 
run by Gage Walker. Kind of a familiar feel to that one. Uh, this last one was going to the left. This one's going to the right. Gage went. I like to see him get going early and often in this game. Yeah, Walker's first touch of the season last year, 75-yard touchdown run against Central Arkansas. They feed him again, and it results in another first down run for Gage Walker. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Same, same play, same result. Another first down for the Hilltoppers. I, I, I'm excited to see. I, I knew this was going to be a challenge for them to try to find ways to get Gage going. He's not been as productive as he was the year before. Seeing how he, he comes out, first two touches, and they go for big yardage. His first run resulted in a gain of 38, which is a new season long for him. His previous was 14. That one was good for 12. So the Hilltoppers in the red zone. Here's Walker again on the give from Thomas and a pickup of three. Interesting to see that, that and I would do the same thing as a quarterback, but um, KT hasn't thrown that ball out to any of screen, so what, what the Hilltoppers are trying to do on offense, you'll see it all day, is in their run game, they tag the outside on the perimeter, they tag little bubble screens or, or now routes or stop routes. They have a one receiver block and another receiver try to catch the ball and get yards, so it's a little extension of the run play. Every play this drive, KT is given the ball in the run at play, play option. Western Kentucky 9 for 10 in the red zone this season. Here's a quick toss and being upended at the 15-yard line was Mitchell Tinsley, his first touch of the day. And a hilltopper slow to get up. It's wide receiver Dalvin Smith. That's, and a, that's a pass play right there. Little, little jet sweep. Thought they had the numbers, but great job by Chattanooga rallying. So Smith is still down at the 15-yard line. They'll take a look at him with 5.04 remaining in the first quarter. So both teams have been able to move the football so far. They have. Um, Hilltoppers exclusively on the run, with the exception of that last little jet sweep. Chattanooga's been really good uh, just having a balance here. So that's going to be exciting to see. As they look at Dalvin Smith, we'll step aside as well. 5.04, first quarter, 7-0 lead for Chattanooga. Thomas gets drilled as he releases it on third and nine. It's caught by his tight end, Simon, and he's bottled up right away. So it's fourth and long for Western Kentucky, and here comes the field goal unit. To me, that's a win from Chattanooga. Um, Gave up a big run play, really gave two explosive plays back to back to Gage Walker uh, and they got in the red zone pretty quickly, fairly easy and giving up a field goal here. That's a win for Chattanooga early in this game. And this brings out the sophomore field goal kicker, Brayden Narvison, who's been perfect. He's three for three this season, played his first two seasons at Iowa State before transferring to Western Kentucky. Snap is down, kick is up, and it is right down the middle. So Braden Norvison stays perfect on the season. Now four for four, and on the opening drive of the game, the Hilltoppers are able to put points on the board. A little chess match here early. It's going to be an exciting one. Um, a lot of, lot of back and forth. like to see Hilltoppers take a little shot, but they got kind of got behind the change there in the red zone, and, and it, it led to a really long third down. and. and uh, essentially a broken play. That was a seven play 50 yard drive that took three and a half minutes for Western Kentucky. So it's a 7-3 lead for Chattanooga. Last time the Mox had the football, they put together a 14 play drive to kick off the game. Fair catch brought in by Bryce Nunnally. We'll make it first and 10 coming up for Chattanooga from their own 25 with 4.06 remaining in the opening quarter. Chattanooga leading Western Kentucky 7-3. And that opening drive, Brandon, it was pretty balanced attack to kick things off for Chattanooga. Yeah, very balanced. They converted three for three on third down. And that alludes that alludes to points. Uh, if you ever do that and you want to be efficient playing football, that's what you got to do. You got to convert on third down and you got to be balanced. Drayton Arnold was two for three on the opening drive. Let's see what adjustments were made by the Hilltopper defense. Here's a shot taken just out of the reach of the safety. Antoine Kincaid tried to fit that one into his top target, not only. 
Yeah, played man coverage there. Thought they were going to heat him up, but they ended up backing off of it. Man coverage over top. Had the look what you want to run an inside fade. Receiver kind of got pushed just a tick inside. Has to get an outside release. Gave the quarterback a little bit of room out there to throw that ball and complete that ball on first down. I, I like the shot. I like the early aggressiveness on this drive. Man coverage again. Play action. There is a juggling catch brought in by Nunnally, and with that catch, he now passes Terrell Owens. That one is a gain of nine. I thought that record would stay alive for as long as we live, and here we are. I, I got to witness it. That's pretty sweet. Oh, and remember, he has eight games to work with in the spring as well, and Nunnally can come back next year if he wants as well. He get his third major or something. He probably gets super masters. Is yeah, that what that's it's called? right. <laughs> <laughs> Super Masters. Here's third and short. Chattanooga was a perfect three for three on third down on their opening drive. Rolling out to the left, Arnold trying to find some room, being chased by D'Angelo Malone, and he is dropped and sacked in a huge stop by the Hilltopper defense. Great stop by the Hilltopper defense. Really confused them. They got brought their receiver in in the box, what you call that is the box. Tackle to tackle is the box. They brought him into the box, created a little bit of a misdirection play, but they were not misdirected at all on the Hilltopper side. That was Jawan Jones with a sack. Malone was in the area as well. Gabe Boring, the junior, on for his first punts of the season. He averaged 42 yards a punt a season ago. It's a high snap. And the lefty is able to get it away. Tinsley backpedals to make the catch, fair catch around the 31. So 2.33 opening quarter, Chattanooga with a 7-3 lead over Western Kentucky. And for the Hilltoppers on their opening drive, Brandon, it was a lot of carries. And coming into this game, coaching staff told us they wanted to get Gage Walker involved, and they did, already over 50 yards rushing today. Yeah, I, I think that was going to be the key. We, we were on the same call, and so we, we heard the excitement Coach Helton talked, was talking with when talking about Gage Walker and his production from last year. He thought that that was one of the things he wanted to key going into this game. Here he is again off the left side, and he gets popped by the linebacker Beck at the 35. Four-yard gain on a little one-back power again. It, it worked twice right. We're going to work it left. One-back power, um, really good play, good blocking on the opposite li offensive line. But that play in particularly, the Hilltoppers won the point of attack, one and a half yards on each side. Thomas making his second career start. Played for Lakeland High School in Lakeland, Florida. Played for a 6A state championship. Highest rated recruit to sign with the Hilltoppers. There's a strong throw to the outside brought in by Lane. He's wrapped up immediately and this will result in third and a long two. Third and two, I like the call on second down. We'll stop routes, make, let the quarterback see somebody come out of a break, throw it on time. KT, if, if you watch, watch how Thomas plays, you can tell if a, if a play is, if he's going to be accurate by his feet. So if his feet are set up to throw the ball, if his feet are uh, quick, for you young quarterbacks, your feet can make you accurate player. On that play in particular, he was accurate because of his feet. They hand it off to Walker, and he's wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. What a stop by the Chattanooga defense. <laughs> Went to the well a little bit too much, Coach Helton did, and uh, one back power again, blew up. When, when you run the one back power, you got to get a good, you have to get a good hinge block from your ta from your center or your your guard um, to replace that guard that's pulling. Chattanooga shot that gap, man, and, and made a play in the backfield. Big play. That was Christian Smith, the Tennessee Tech transfer, with a huge tackle on third down for Chattanooga. And the senior Australian punter, John Haggerty, booms one away. Fair catch. It's over the head. It bounces inside the 10. What a beautiful punt by Haggerty. He did that a lot a season ago, and what a special senior season he's having this year. We were just talking about that before the broadcast. I think Haggerty's got a chance to play if he wants to keep extending his career uh, in, in America playing in, you know, in the NFL. He was first team all conference a season ago, averaged 46 yards a punt last year. 
So with 30 seconds remaining in the opening quarter, the Mocs with the football again, leading 7-3. to three. Well, it, It'll be a key for me to see if Chattanooga can get their quarterback back in rhythm. Two, two straight com incompletions um, and a sack. Uh, that's, not, that's not good business. So after the 53-yard punt by Haggerty, Chattanooga on first down, hands one off for a gain of three. Back to the outside zone. Getting their quarterback, giving on the outside zone, getting their offensive lineman to get off the line. Uh, really doesn't matter what the Hilltoppers are doing when you're running zone. If you're, run, if you're an outside zone running team uh, on the offensive side of the ball, it doesn't really matter what the defense does. A lot, of the, a lot of these coaches like to scheme up things for the defense. When you run outside zone, it doesn't really matter. You're just kind of zone blocking and trying to get a win. That was Gino Appleberry, the Western Kentucky transfer with his first carry of the day. And as we head to the second quarter, it'll be second and six for Chattanooga, leading seven to three. Start of the second quarter, it's second and six for Chattanooga. Mox leading the Hilltopper, seven to three. Handoff to Appleberry, and Appleberry bounces it off the left side and has a first down run. You know, he's got to be fired up today, coming back to his old stomping grounds. Absolutely. And a little outside zone there. They actually ran that outside zone again into the pressure. And luckily enough, it worked. I don't think Hilltoppers are playing very fundamental, fundamentally gap sound defense right now when it comes to run gaps. It's something to look forward to. This game, by the way, was originally scheduled to be played on September 5th, then moved to September 3rd back in June, and then with all the COVID-19 situation, pushed back to today, October 24th. First meeting since 2007. Back on the ground to Ford, and Ford with another solid run across the 30, or up to the 30. And Brandon, so far Chattanooga has been able to run the football pretty well. Over 70 yards rushing in the first half so far. And not doing it any other creative ways. They're keeping it simple, running the outside zone. Seen a little inside zone, but I haven't seen a puller from Chattanooga yet. And that's that's when you know you're, you're rolling and you don't have to be creative in the run game. You can just line up and, and win the point of attack, and that's what they're doing right now on the offensive line. It's second and three. That's not only in the slot to the right. Arnold being pressured, escapes out of the pocket, and he runs for a first down, scampers out of bounds at the 39. Little man coverage there. They had it, the Hilltoppers had it cleaned up pretty good from, from a coverage standpoint. Uh, Good job by the, the mocks protecting the quarterback, really having a max protection, three guys in a route. Uh, that's, just a, that's just a little bit of an example of the athlete that Arnold is back there. He can make plays with his feet. Hilltopper's got to have to have a counter for that. Read option, hands it off to Ford. Ford with a cut. Bangs his way across the 45, slam down at the 47, a gain of nine. Early in this game, I know I talked about it earlier, but controlling the emotions and playing an unemotional, uh, an emotional game unemotionally, and catching up to from practice speed to game speed, and you can see that the Mox coaching staff has done a fantastic job of on the offensive side of the ball, catching those their, their players up on drive two of the game. So this is going to be an interesting battle here, and for, first and foremost on the offense and defensive line, that's where you win games. Tyrell Price back in. They go play action. Arnold in traffic. It's knocked away. Third and one coming out. That was a nice defensive play by Bradshaw. Earned his first starts of his career last week. Roger Cray's been pretty banked up. He makes a nice play there. Yeah, he did. He made a great play. Man coverage across the board. It was actually covered zero. Uh, the guy that came from the backside tried to rob it. He becomes a free player, and he came back and robbed that play. Good job by the Hilltoppers on second down. See if they can get out on third. Here's Price. A flag is down around the 40, and this will be a five-yard penalty against Chattanooga. The first of the ball game on either team. Go from third and one. Go from third and one to third and six. 
feels a little bit like the momentum is going to the, towards this Hilltopper defense here, get, forcing a little bit of a penalty, a break, pass breakup. Interesting to see if uh, Chattanooga controls their quarterback, make sure that he's not, doesn't make a bad play worse. Just keep him in, in line, keep him in rhythm here on third down. Big one early in this game. It really is, it's third and six. Our referee, Chris Bynum, wants to put the correct time. He's all over it. So this is a pivotal third and six. Bryce Nunnally is not on the field for Chattanooga on this third down. Little combo coverage here, zone coverage. Who does Drayton Arnold look for? Steps up in the pocket. Now he's going to try to take off and run. He's being pressured by Darwin. He throws across his body, and what a catch by Henderson. Western Kentucky sign line is saying that Reginald Henderson bobbled it. Here's another look at it. Phenomenal play by Arnold extending the play. It wasn't there. It, they played a little robber man coverage. Man, what that means is it's combo coverage is they're going to play man concepts on the outside and combo coverage is on the inside with two versus three. And great play by Arnold being able to use his legs like we talked about earlier in the drive. Kid's an athlete. Got to make sure that we, we uh, if we're playing defensive football, uh, manage for that. That was a gain of 16. Here's a first down run, a pickup of two. Henderson, by the way, he was a strong safety at Middle Tennessee. And then he comes to Chattanooga and they turn him into a wide receiver. Normally it's the other way around. It is. I mean, he must have had some good hands and he probably is a little motivated playing the Hilltoppers as well, being a Middle Tennessee kid and uh, starting his career there. Great job. You mean, that, that is practiced nowadays in college football. It's practiced to be in a scrambled situation like that. Here's Ford. Ford tackled from behind inside the 40 yard line. Brought down by Jaden Hunter. Outside zone again. We still haven't seen a puller in this game from Chattanooga. And, and they're getting production out of that outside zone. It's going to set up something later in the game. Look for a little boot, a little play action boot. Maybe not here on third down, knowing that they have to throw it, but maybe a little play action boot later in the game off the outside zone, uh, going the opposite way, uh, getting their quarterback, controlling their quarterback, making cutting the field down in half for them. Uh, I can see that coming. I can kind of feel it coming. He's setting something up here in the early in the game for later. Chattanooga four for five today on third down. The mocks have third and six. Arnold, again play action, again he will try to take off and run, chased out of bounds by Devin Key, well shy of the first down marker. That was actually another designed quarterback run. Uh, you had two, everybody blocking, receivers were blocking on the perimeter, did a good job sealing. They actually had a spy that was picked up by the center, Western did, and, and Arnold gets a good job of going, going, being patient and trying to make a play with his feet. They're going to go for it here. A little too far for field goal range for Chattanooga, so the mock's going for it on fourth and two. Keep it on the ground here or go through the air? Outside zone. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You got zone coverage by the Hilltoppers. Interesting. There it is. Here's Ford. Ford gets out of the reach of Devin Key and pounds his way for a first down. Fantastic play by Ford, but that's just, that's just effort, that's just energy, that's just not being beat up, but great play. I think they actually might have had him behind the line of scrimmage, behind the sticks, on the, but the second effort made it no doubt. Ford is averaging six yards a carry so far in this first half. That's gotta be good for a kid coming off an ACL. That's gotta be really good for his, you know, his mental, being such a lonely place for so long, and now he's back at the teammates, yeah. and he's averaging that, that's awesome. Arnold on first down, takes a shot for Nunnally in the end zone. Incomplete. They lit him up. They, uh, they, they brought everything. They brought everything the Hilltoppers did in zero coverage there. Last play had the perfect call. Perfect call for the man coverage. And I think uh, uh, old, inexperienced quarterback was just a tick too late. That Nunnally had him beat early. Get the ball up in the air. There's there's two there's two different tempos in this game when you get when you get past that 50 yard line, it's trying to score. 
That was Alexander on the coverage. On second and 10, Arnold again flushed out to the left, throws across his body and overshoots his intended target, Henderson. A little bit of a broken play there. It looked like they had a receiver run the wrong route. Just the, this is just the result of not being able to uh, get, get, get away from that first game jitters uh, here while the Hilltoppers are playing week five. And so a uh, little broken play, good play by Drayton. Uh, Drayton just not making a bad, bad play worse, throwing it where our receiver was going to catch it or no receiver was going to catch it. Another pivotal third and 10 for Chattanooga. I think you're in two down territory here. Philosophy here would probably just get half. Arnold does throw across the middle and it's a lunging catch made by Henderson. And now it's decision time for Rusty Wright. On the road, D1 double team, gotta go for it. Dray Drayton early in this game, he's he's gotta be a little bit better with his eyes. He's playing well, he's getting away with it right now, but the Hilltoppers, uh, they're gonna adjust. He's gotta he's gotta be able to hold guys with his eyes. Young quarterbacks, you can you don't know the power of your eyes. You can hold defenders, especially in zone coverage. Another that example was a man, but in zone coverage, you can hold players with your eyes and make those windows just a little bit bigger. Drayton's gotta do a little bit better of a job in, later in this game. There's a hard count movement at the line of scrimmage. Arnold's gonna take a shot and it's dropped by Henderson inside the 10. I don't see any flags on the field. Chattanooga definitely thought there was movement at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that was, a, that was just a, we used to call that purple rain. It was just no play. And if they, they jump off sides, you're gonna do a hard count. If they jump off sides, you run, you run it all goes. And so I think that's what happened. Well, Rusty Wright is absolutely livid. They ruled it a catch. So they are reviewing this as Chris Bynum will take a look at this. Our replay official today, it's Britt Choate. Well, I don't believe this will be a reception as Henderson never had it cleanly in the ball, clearly ended up on the ground. But Rusty Wright, he's upset because he thought that should, be, should have been a five yard penalty against Western Kentucky. Look at him, he is still hot on the sideline. I, I wouldn't say that I'd, I disagree with him because I think it was an offsides. I think they had a good call, but it, again, Arnold made a great throw, a uh, broken play. Again, they almost got away with another broken play. It would have been the third one of this game where they got a positive out of it. They just had a drop back there. Great back shoulder throw by Arnold, but we'll see if it gets overturned or not. Here's a look at that last play. She said back shoulder throw to Henderson. And Henderson, he just never caught it cleanly, never had possession. I think that's pretty clear. That's going to be reversed, going to be Hilltopper ball. So again, waiting on our referee, Chris Bynum. That might so it is reversed, and that will be a turnover on down for Chattanooga. Graham, was that the easiest reversal you've ever seen in the history of Yeah, the yeah nothing line? controversial about that no, one at all. Absolutely nothing controversial about that one. So if you're Western Kentucky here, Brandon, Hilltoppers have to take advantage have of to. this momentum that they have now. I agree. I, would, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Helton and those boys try to take a shot here early on first down, get their quarterback. He's He's been... Uh, a little bit in rhythm, but I think he's a little anxious to throw the ball a little bit more coming off a game where he threw it a bunch of times. Thomas so far this season has completed 47% of his passes. Three touchdowns, two picks. Both came last week at UAB. Here's a long throw and a short pickup on first down. Little run pass option there. Again, the corner plays off. We call that a little now route, which is a little, they ran a little hitch. Um, if the corner plays real off to the field, the quarterback, abort your fake. Number one rule, if you're throwing to the field in the quick game, you gotta abort that fake, come off the, and throw it as fast as you possibly can because that's a lot of green grass out there. Play action on second and seven. Being chased and will just fling it out of bounds over the head of his tight end, Simon. And Thomas, Slow to get up. He took a shot he took right a when he released hit. the football. That's a big hit. That's a big boy taking a big hit now. That one must have been 
but they play a little outside, fake the little outside zone. I think the Hilltoppers disconnect here on that, that, that play, and maybe I'm being overly critical, but being a little bit, for me, your run game and your play action game has to, has to mirror up. They haven't ran outside zone yet in this game, and they ran an outside zone. On third and second. It's brought by Lane. Lane driven out of bounds around the 31, and that results in a first down, a pickup of nine on third and seven. Just a little bit of a taste of KT's arm. I mean, the kid's got a cannon rocket for the arm. Throwing out. I don't know if me playing quarterback for the Hilltoppers, we were throwing in rhythm out routes to the field. I mean, that is impressive. This kid's got all the upside to be a really good player. Making his second career start today, Tyrell Pigram still dealing with some turf toe. The Maryland transfer started the first four games this season. Under seven minutes in the first half, Chattanooga scored on their opening drive of the game, as did Western Kentucky. Here's Moses, his first carry of the day. Works his way up to the 37. Moses, the redshirt junior from Palm Beach, Florida. He's had two ACL injuries in his career. He's happy to be back. He tore his ACL last year in the first game of the season against Central Arkansas. God bless doctors, man. I mean, you got a lot of ACLs, kids coming back. These kids are coming back from these ACLs even quicker and quicker now. This modern technology is unbelievable. Oh, looks like it covers zero here. Unless they, they're just disguising. It is. Thomas looks left, throws left, and he connects with Tinsley. Shakes his way across the 45. That results in a gain of 13 in the first down. You're seeing Thomas get into a little bit of rhythm here. Uh, short passes after he took that hit, maybe it kind of brushed off a little bit of uh, you know, nervousness. Maybe it brushed off a little bit of that when he took that big hit on that rollout, but he's completed two passes in a row in here. He looks good. He looks like he's on time and in rhythm. That's Walker back in the backfield, coming in from Moses. 82 yards of total offense so far for Western Kentucky. Here's Walker trying to find some room, and he nose dives this way back to the line of scrimmage. One back power again. Looks like the last couple times they've ran it, the Hilltoppers, Chattanooga's had an answer for it. One back power worked early. Uh, take a look at it from the sideline. Uh, when you when you when you do that through a d dummy cadence, you're looking to the sideline, trying to get in the perfect play. Uh, looked like the, they checked the checker there and, and, and moved the front on them, so they weren't able to keep that same look that they thought they were going to have pre-snap. Thomas sets up a screen to Walker. He's got blockers down in front, and Walker has a first down for the Hilltoppers down to the Chattanooga 41. Great call by Tyson Helt. Uh, little, little running back screen out there, getting, keeping, keeping KT in rhythm. That's what they're doing right now early in this game. They're keeping him in rhythm, keeping him controlled, cutting the field in half, getting one, two reads. That's good for a young quarterback uh, to get his confidence so that he can take shots later down the field. Screen passes are good ways to get the kids in rhythm, get, get, get their players do, working together, and also get Gage Walker the ball, which they need to do desperately. Here's another screen. This is brought in by Burt, and Burt's down the sideline inside the 35. Graham, you remember in, in the first drive of the game when I was talking about how he's not giving the ball, uh, or not throwing the ball in these run pass options right there. Uh, just an example of a, another run pass option where KT throws that ball out there. It, all, only reason he's throwing out there is because he thinks he's got numbers. Three receivers, our three receivers, Chattanooga got two. We got a chance to make this a good play, and they did get one right there on a little screen pass in RPO. On second and three, here's Moses with a first down run. Moses down the sideline and is tripped up around the 15. And a penalty marker down at the 24. That's right around the area where Moses is able to bounce it to the outside. I think it's a hold. By Coach Helton's body language, it looks like it might be a hold. If it is, it will be the first one of the game against Western Kentucky. And it is, as you see Chris Bynum. That has been the calling card for West Kentucky. They are very good under Tyson Helton and penalties. They only average three penalties per game. That is good. I mean, that is an 
That's a pretty underrated stat, if you ask me. They only have 15 the entire season, and that's through five games. Wow. So that wipes out the first down run by Moses. Now you got second, second and two here. Depends on what Coach Help wants to do. He just picked up the first down pretty, pretty good, pretty easily. What I mean, and you're right on the fringe of that time. We we call that the, the fringe mode, where you're right outside of the red zone. See if it takes a shot. Oh, nope, not now. They're gonna need a timeout. They just weren't in sync after that holding penalty as Tyson Helton calls a timeout. With the timeout, we'll take one as well. Second and two for West Kentucky. When we come back, Hilltoppers marching down the field. Three twenty-four remaining in the first half. Chattanooga holding on to a 7-3 lead over Western Kentucky. This will be the tenth play of this drive coming up for the Hilltoppers. Thomas, eight of nine through the air, 43 yards. Most of the damage has been on the ground for the Hilltoppers as they will hand it off to Moses, and Moses has a first down. A little surprised Hilton didn't take a shot there. Second and one, picked up, kind of had to, a uh, down to waste. And what I mean by that, you just kind of, you had a shot to get it a manageable third down, no matter if you got nothing or got smoked in the backfield, taking a sack. But um, a little bit of, you can kind of see Helton's committed to the run game and getting Gage going early in this game. So it's Tinsley in motion. They give it to Tinsley and he can't hold on to it. That was Jordan Jones, the senior from Tennessee. He was a walk on to start his career for Chattanooga. Last year he led the SOCON in pass breakups with 12. Good play, good, good eyes. I know that's a sexy term. Good eyes by a corner. A good corner has to have good eyes. Where he's got to, has to have a feel. I think that's the most underrated position talent-wise. I'm probably underrated athlete in the world. Having good eyes, being able to find concepts, does a good job there busting up the screen. On second and 10, Thomas wants to take a shot and overshoots his target, Burt, inside the 10. Now, a little bit of an opposite effect. They want a little pass interference there. I don't know if that's a good no call, in my opinion, but um, I do think that they've done a now, they, early in the game, someone must have echoed to him on the sideline, hey, on these run pass options, the pass is there because he hasn't handed the ball off on a run pass option in about four or five plays here as we're looking at it. Hilltoppers, one for three on third down. Looks like Chattanooga is about to bring the house. Checking out of it. They're checking the checker, which is smart football. No blitz from Chattanooga. Thomas fires one, brought in by Lane, and Lane is dropped immediately, and Brandon from the spot, he's a couple yards shy. I wonder if they had a go-for-it mentality here on fourth down, two-play mentality, because I think he was under, there was not a single receiver in that route concept that ran over the, the first down marker. It looks like he's going to go again here. Braden Arvison, he has not missed a field goal this season. And right now the Hilltoppers appear to be going for it on fourth and three. The way they've been running the ball, I'd stick to the run game here. Hilltoppers have gone for the most on fourth down in Conference USA this season, over 70% conversion rate, and they drop one off. It's a crossing route to Burt, and Burt has it. Ooh. That was uh, just a little crossing route. They had a little pick play called. They got man coverage, got exactly what you wanted. Uh, didn't bring any pressure. Good accurate throw by KT. Accurate throws meets, equals yards after catch. Again, that ball was just a tick behind him. Why? KT's feet were just a little bit slow. Not not overly slow, that's why he completed it, but a little bit overly slow. He's kind of be, gotta be, still be a little bit patient in that, in that pocket, but great play on fourth and three, high pressure situation. Timeout taken by Chattanooga. The defense has been on the field a long time. This has been a 14 play drive for West Kentucky with the timeout. We'll take one as well. 125 remaining in the first half. Hilltoppers marching. Hilltoppers staring at first and 10 from the Chattanooga 20 coming out of the timeout taken by the Mocs. 
This will be play number 15 for Western Kentucky. This drive has taken almost seven minutes. Here's a reverse to Tinsley. Tinsley trying to find some room in the middle. Picks up five yards. A little trickery there. Nice, nice call by Tyson Helton. And a better play by Tinsley. Making a couple of play, players miss. They didn't have numbers going back the other way. And uh, good, sound, fundamental football by Chattanooga being in their gaps and, and kind of expecting a little trickly. We thought you would see some trickly on the other side, but first trick play comes from Western. Here's Walker. Walker celebrated Walker his birthday here. earlier this week on the 22nd. That time he's only Walker able to muster a yard. Timeout taken by Tyson Helton with 49 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And we'll take a timeout as well. Big third and four coming up for West Kentucky. Hilltoppers trailing by four. Third and four for West Kentucky trailing seven to three. We're in the red zone only one so far today. They had to settle for a field goal. Thomas scans the defense and he drops one off underneath to Lane and Lane just picks up the first down. Interesting call by Tyson Helton. Ran a man beater. Great job by Lane sitting down in the zone coverage. Good job by KT finding him when he sits down and getting a first down. Has to put three more seconds back on the game clock. Well, yesterday it poured a good bit in Bowling Green and it did not rain a single drop until kickoff. It has been raining pretty consistently, as you see Rusty Wright. He's upset about something after that previous play. Here's first and goal from the 10. Thomas, another handoff. This might be a pass. Keeping it himself and being tripped up all the way at the 18 is Burt. Burt sure looked like he was expecting to throw it in the end zone. Keeps it, and it's a monster loss and a timeout taken by Western Kentucky. Hilltoppers trying to find some creative ways in the red zone to score touchdowns, and shockingly enough, they've been pretty good. So decision time coming up here for West Kentucky, facing second and 18 when we come back. 23 seconds remaining in the first half. Hilltoppers are now out of timeouts. Second and goal, the ball's at the 18. And for the first time today, empty set, five wide for Thomas. Thomas with a clean pocket. Now he's in trouble and he's hitting the ball, pops out. Beck jumps on top of it at the 20. And the Chattanooga defense comes up with a huge stop at the end of the second quarter on the 19th play of the drive for Western Kentucky. What an unbelievable play. What an unbelievable call. What about unbelievable defensive line work. KT really has nobody open on this play. Holds the ball a little tick too long. That's just being a young quarterback. Got to know the situation. Know you have no timeouts. Can't take a sack there. But a great play by Chattanooga and their defensive coordinator, Renzo Ward, just dialing it up and covering it up and confusing the young quarterback on the 19th play of the drive. Lorenzo Ward, he's been doing this a long time at a high level. He's been the interim head coach at Louisville, defensive coordinator at South Carolina. He's been at Virginia Tech as well. So Chattanooga, they're going to take a shot. Arnold down the sideline looking for Henderson, and it is incomplete. How about that being super aggressive with 11 seconds remaining in the second quarter? I think that's just a product if you got one game in the fall. You're going to play to win, not play to lose. Yeah. That was Henderson has a couple of catches today. Working against Bishop. This time they hand one off to Ford, and Ford gets maybe a yard. And this will be the final play of the second quarter. What a first half for Chattanooga, leading on the road in their one and only game in the fall. Seven to three, Chattanooga leads Western Kentucky at the break.
Halftime in Bowling Green. Chattanooga leads Western Kentucky 7-3 in a very fast-paced first half. Brandon, your first half thoughts are what? I think that Chattanooga has done an amazing job of playing an emotional game without any emotions, harnessing that energy on the sideline, knowing when to gear it up, when to have to dial it back, especially at the quarterback position. Offense and defensive coordinators have done a good job putting their players in situations for them to be successful in this first half. On the opposite side with the Hilltoppers, I think that they have to find a rhythm. They got to get their, their running game going. They got to take some shots on the field, have to have that, that, that run game mirror the play action game in the second half. I think they're kind of setting things up here in the first half. Uh, I'm excited to see uh, the shots and the trick stuff that they're going to see here in the second half for sure. First half was a fun one and it went by in a blink of an eye. Should be in store for a fantastic second half as Chattanooga leads at the break 7-3 to three over Western Kentucky. Halftime in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Chattanooga leads Western Kentucky 7-3 to three at the break. Entertaining uh, first half. Not a lot of possessions for either team so far, Brandon, but what do you think would be the big adjustments for each squad in the second half? Well, for Chattanooga, they have to just keep keep that energy locked in. Uh, remember, some of these teams, some of these guys are going to go, uh, this whole team is going to go back to lifting weights next week. So they have to make sure that they take advantage of the next 30 minutes on the field and uh, really play with that same type of energy. Got to keep the the quarterback in rhythm. Uh, coach has got to do a good job of having the run game mirror the pass game and, and really setting up the, the, the pass plays with the run game uh, for Chattanooga. For the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, they need to find the juice. They need to grab some juice from Chattanooga that when they brought off the bus and, and, and be the most energized team on the field here. If they can do that, they can find some explosive plays in the pass game, I think they'll be okay. But uh, I really like the game plan. It's going to be a good one in the second half. I'm excited to see the chess match between these coordinators and these offensive minds, defensive minds. So it should be exciting. It should be an exciting game here in the second half. Stay tuned. Halftime score at Chattanooga. 7-3 lead over Western Kentucky. Welcome back to Bowling Green. Our halftime score at Chattanooga leads Western Kentucky at the break 7-3. Hilltoppers only had the football three times in the first half. Chattanooga had four drives, and both of those drives for each of those teams, their last drives, if you remember, just a late turnover on downs for the Hilltoppers, and then Chattanooga had a two-play drive, and then the half ended. I look at some of the first half highlights uh, between these two teams. It got off to a really good start for Chattanooga as they scored on their opening drive of the game. Here you see the opening drive of the game for the Hilltoppers, and it was a handoff to Walker. Walker with a good first half. The leading rusher for the Hilltoppers with 54 yards on the ground, including that season-long run of 38 yards. Here's the only touchdown of the day. It was a touchdown run by the senior quarterback, Drayton Arnold, his first rushing touchdown this season for the Old Dominion transfer, and that has been it so far. That has been the one and only touchdown of the game. And here is that last drive of the first half for West Kentucky. Thomas was looking on the end zone on second and goal, got hit, loose ball picked up by the linebacker Beck, who was second team all conference a season ago. And that is a look at some of the first half stats. When we return, Countdown is on to the start of the third quarter between the Hilltoppers and the Mock. 7-3 lead, Chattanooga at the break. As we get ready for the start of the third quarter, Chattanooga holding on to the 7-3 lead over West Kentucky. And Brandon, one thing, I don't think we can touch on this enough. It's just Chattanooga. This is their one and only game in the fall. They will play eight games in the spring, all conference games, but they have looked awfully impressive, especially for a team and program that has not played a game in 336 days. They have. Uh, a, a testament to their coaching staff. Uh, we went out and talked to those guys earlier this week and how unique the situation. They just didn't, both sides really just laughing at the situation because it's just something so unique and something that you, you might not ever see again having one football game in the fall 
and having have to run eight in a row in the spring. So talking to those guys, man, we, it just was really exciting to see how their team was going to react. Talking to the coaching staff, they thought they were going to figure out what their identity was going into the spring. So we're kind of treating this thing as a, like kind of a spring game. Uh, but you get to play somebody else, which is pretty sweet. So maybe the NCAA will come up with an, a, a rule where other teams can play each other for spring games because of this or something. But yeah. it's been a... It's been a very impressive start from a Chattanooga team who hasn't played in so long. They, they just look like they're really overpowering the Hilltoppers, which I'm very surprised by. Um, Hilltoppers being in mid-season form, uh, to say, and Chattanooga playing the first game in a very long time. If you're wondering, Chattanooga, they're one of 15 teams that will play only one game in the fall in all of NCAA this season. That is interesting. I mean, I, I, like, like, I, I think it was a perfect... Uh, situation that they said that it was going to be treating it like a spring game because that's really essentially what it is. They, they in the spring season they only got in one game before everything got shut down because of COVID, and now they're treating this as a spring game and they're winning their <laughs> their own spring game. Got to be good for recruiting if you ask me. Their head coach Rusty Wright. He was asked earlier this week, "What what have you been doing on Saturdays in the fall since you haven't had any games?" And he was just joking around and said. He's been paying a lot of attention to the Atlanta Braves and their postseason <laughs> run and got to see them in the NLCS all the way to game seven before dropping uh, that, that ball game to the Los Angeles Dodgers. But, I mean, that's just what it's been like. He said he did not sit down on the couch and watch a college football game until two weeks ago. It, that, which is interesting. I think it's good for his mental health. I mean, like, like we talked to him earlier in the game, we were talking about harnessing the energy. I know I've talked about it couple times with harnessing this energy and he was like man I'm not really worried about my players uh, playing so too emotional I'm worried about myself I, I think I'm going to be jacked up just as much as these players just to get on the field and uh, go through the game day preparation he said his number one thing that he was uh, focused and worried most about was having a meal with his team I thought that was interesting I, I really guess I just really didn't realize they haven't had to have a meal together in, in over a year I mean that's that's incredible just things you, you don't take yeah. for granted during these times uh, just something as simple as a meal. That and just being in the same room together. Absolutely. A lot of Zoom meetings over the last few months for both of these teams. So as we get ready for the start of the second half between Chattanooga and Western Kentucky, the Hilltoppers will have the football to begin the third quarter. Looking at the numbers, both teams under 200 yards of total offense. Hilltoppers only had 125 yards of total offense to the 153 for Chattanooga. And one thing we haven't really touched on, Brandon, yet, it's the weather. And it has just been consistently raining all day. And we've only had the one turnover. That was Thomas being hit in the pocket as we're underway in the third quarter. It's, a number, it's another pooch kick brought in by the tight end Wachowski, and he is tripped up across the 30. The weather is going to be interesting in the second half. Kind of, I know the Hilltoppers especially, Chattanooga really didn't have any measure for it, but Hilltoppers have been not very good protecting that football, and the weather will give them an extra test here in the second half of this game just to make sure that they're cautious of that football on defense taking care of it when they get interceptions even getting takeovers and as a quarterback it's not anybody that's going to touch that ball when it's slippery you got to make sure you're extra careful of not giving the ball away and giving them cheap looks coming in in this game the hilltoppers minus five in the turnover department they do have a turnover today they start off the third quarter with a run and walker nowhere at all might have lost a yard yeah again just, just a pure effort play to start this half from the Chattanooga defense. Just pure effort. I mean, they don't have anything. They actually, the Hilltoppers run a zone, and they have numbers. But just from an effort standpoint, this looks like maybe this, this layoff has been good for Chattanooga and getting rested up for this game. On second and 11, swinging in a crowd. Blue jerseys everywhere, and the mocks not full to that pass to Tinsley at all. No gain. Looked like there was a little miscommunication or a, a coach that tried to overthink a call there. Uh, tried to run a little swing bubble, bubble screen action, make him make sure that they maybe over pursue and throw it underneath. I'm not sure. Maybe the running back went the opposite way there, but a little sloppy here early in the Hilltoppers. Now they gotta, they're, they're stuck with a third and 11 where they have not been good on third down this year. 
They're two for five today. Thomas again in trouble, shakes out of one defender, can't avoid the other two, and another sack on the play. And the Hilltoppers go three and out to begin the third quarter. Not only go three and out, they get negative 10 on your first drive of the, game, of the second half here, coming off of a fumble. So not, not much chemistry here on offense for these Hilltoppers. Uh, look for them to try to make some, find a way to get some energy on the offensive side of the ball. Second punt of the game for Haggerty. His first one went for 53, and he booms this one away. Out of bounds around the 40. That was Brandon Dowdle back deep to return that punt. What was that guy's name? So they will. Brandon Dowdle? Ooh, close to you. Not Spelled not differently a little bit. So. Start of the third quarter has gone fantastic for Chattanooga. Three and out on defense, and then you have excellent field position for your first drive of the third quarter. Yeah, again, I look for them to come out there and run that outside zone here early and often. Uh, find that find that to open up the play-action passing game uh, for a quarterback that's kind of started the game three for four, now he's at five for 12. Look for him to get back in rhythm here in this, this opening drive of the second half. Handoff to Ford, and he's stonewalled after a gain of one. The safety, Devin Key, in on the stop. A little ISO play, Mike ISO, old school football right there. Got number 17 coming, trying to find the Mike linebacker, going one-on-one -on -one with them. I think they threw a little wrinkle of a zone read on there in the ISO. I've never seen that before, but quarterback maybe should have kept that ball, or maybe I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. You did throw for over 5,000 yards. Yeah, so if we're going to talk 50 touchdowns if in the season. We're going to talk about zone read and quarterback runs in these new days. I, I'm, I'm, I'm out, man. Yeah. How many did you have in your career? I, think I had like negative 60. <laughs> Here's Arnold stepping up in the pocket and lunges forward, gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Jeremy Darwin, one of the first ones to him. You can kind of see here, Arnold's out of rhythm. We got, we got to uh, find a way as an offensive staff here to get him back in rhythm. Maybe a little screen, not now, uh, but a little screen pass, something short, uh, get his feet underneath him. He just needs to see a, a completion right now. Uh, he, he had a couple guys open in that pocket just looking at the rush. That's just a, that's just a product of not playing. He's five for 12 through the year for 49 yards. Does have a rushing touchdown today. Again, all the time in the world. Now he's going to take off and run and works his way to the 48. He will be short of the first down marker. That was actually good defense by the Hilltoppers. He had no one on that play. They put a little soft two coverage. Uh, did a really good job passing off the zones. Well, what I mean by that, just passing off defenders, passing guys off in the zone, making sure that they communicated really well. Talking to Clayton earlier this week, Clayton White, a defensive coordinator for the Hilltoppers, he said communication was going to be number one in this game. Third and long situation off of offense that's sputtering a little bit. Uh, big, big play early in this half. Second point of the game for Gabe Boring. This one skips at the 25 and was a touch by a Hilltopper inside the 10 yard line. And it is Western Kentucky football, the official says. Now, now he reverses and says Chattanooga football. <laughs> we got some excitement here in the house. Well, it was clearly touched by the up man there for the Hilltoppers, and it was recovered by Chattanooga. Jarrell Lawson with the recovery, and the official popped up, and he immediately signaled Hilltopper football. Wow, what a big special teams play. Needed a spark. Just talking how good about this, this defense here. Talking really good about this defense here, and, and now we got another sudden change. They're going to get back on the field, feeling good about coming off the field and getting a three and out. Now they get back on the field here. Big play for Chattanooga. Where the mocks have had success, it has been on the ground. 109 yards rushing today. And coverage. Appleberry. They're going to double Apple. They're going to double Manoli here. That's Ford and Appleberry in the backfield. Here's Ford with a carry and muscles his way down to the five. So Ford coming off that ACL injury. You see that big bulky brace on his left knee. 
It is second and goal from the five. I think this is the time to take a shot. Here's Ford again, and Ford greeted at the line of scrimmage. Not much there at all. We're going to throw it. I, I, my personal opinion, never been a coach in my life, but personal opinion, if you're going to throw it inside the five, in my opinion, you're going to throw it on second down because that's that now they know you're going to try to throw the ball here. You're not looking for three on the turnover. If, they can, if the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers can get forced chat to, to three points, that's a win for Western again. So big play here. Third and goal from the five. Looks left in the end zone. One on one off the fingertips of Henderson. Interesting call there. Just run, ran some the old fashioned fade routes and tried to say our guy's taller than your guy, where he's gonna go up and get it. Very good defense, good, good, good individual play. Uh, but that's probably the, the last guy roughing to uh, I would try to test on third down. He's a good player. Yeah, Ruffin, the senior from Louisiana. Bypass breakups this season. Field goal attempt for the senior, Victor Olmo. He's from Brazil, played high school football in Chattanooga, and he puts that one right down the middle to give Chattanooga a 10-3 lead. So the mocks cash in after the turnover on the muff punts. They're up by a touchdown. Not 9.35, third quarter, Chattanooga 10, Western Kentucky 3. Today it represents the whiteout game for the Hilltoppers. You see them in those all-white uniforms for the home game. Hilltoppers are 5-1 when wearing these uniforms for a home game. The only loss was to Old Dominion two years ago in that crazy 37-34 victory for Old Dominion. Wachowski's been a busy man today. The tight end, that's the third time that he's been able to have a kickoff return. Now the, those jerseys look pretty good. They gotta play a little better in those things, man. Early it's been ugly for the Hilltower, especially on offense, man. They've they've really struggled to move the ball down the field. And when they did move the ball, uh, the, the, the two drives they did, one of them they had, they had a red zone turnover. So uh, gotta clean things up, Coach Helton does. I know he's uh, echoed that to his team, but they, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this drive and seeing KT uh, Thomas get back into rhythm here as a quarterback. Thomas, 12 out of 15, 59 yards passing. Here's Walker. Walker gets spun down shy midfield. Walker's been a bright spot today. Nine carries for 57 yards. The, the best friend of a young quarterback making his second career start is a good run game, and that's what Gage Walker gives you out of the backfield. He gets you a good run game. He's a hard-nosed guy. He's got potential to break it at any point, so uh, looking forward to getting him involved here in his second half. Uh, good one there to start, it off, start us off. Only three down linemen for Chattanooga, and they'll hand it off to Walker again. Walker dances his way down to the 40. A first down run for Gage Walker after that pick up a 12. Gage Walker is going to be a key to this game in the second half and getting, making the young quarterback feel good. But just a little pull, and pull, pin and pull play here by the Hilltoppers, uh, getting them outside, and great job in the perimeter, getting the blocks on the perimeter. You don't have to be an all-American blocker out there if you're a wide receiver. You just got to get your hands on them and give a just walker just a little enough time to bounce it out, especially on those perimeter plays. Well, coming into this game, the interior of the offensive line for West Kentucky has been pretty banged up, but they have been able to run it today. Here's another run to Gage Walker down inside the 35. This is a well-experienced offensive line for the Hilltoppers. 125 combined career starts. Wow. That's impressive. And they, 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 have, they have seen progress in the run game and the pass game. This, this team came together, this offensive line's come together and played that many times and, and played well. Mox are showing blitz off the right side. Play clock under 10. Here's a 
run to the left side and gets back in the line of scrimmage, does Gage Walker. And another third down for Western Kentucky. They're just two for six today on third down. They're dead last in Conference USA and third down conversions this season at just 27%. A lot of that has been a product of not being, yeah, the numbers on third down, that's one play at a three. You gotta be good on the first and the second one. They've been decent on the first and second one on this, this drive here. We'll see if they can pick it up. They keep it on the ground. Here's a first down run for Moses. Moses breaks a tackle of the 15 and it's dropped by Beck around the 11. Touchdown saving tackle by Ty Beck. It's first and goal for the Hilltoppers. Well, outside zone. Outside zone, hey, you want to beat us with an outside zone? Western Kentucky says we're going to beat you with an outside zone. So, little great play call. I think Chattanooga was thinking pass as I was sitting in the booth, but a uh, good run play. I think that was going to set up a, a, a go for it on fourth down, two down territory. It's a gain of 23, longest run this season for Moses. So here is where the Hilltoppers have struggled today in the red zone. They've had to settle for a field goal, and then they had a turnover in the second quarter. They feed Moses again. He's knocked off his feet inside the five, but a penalty marker is down at the 15. This appears to be holding on Western Kentucky. It is a hold against Western Kentucky, and Brandon, we touched on it earlier. They don't get a lot of penalties. That's only the second one today on WKU. They don't get a lot of penalties. That one was a very costly one, man. Uh, really puts you in a tough spot first and 20 now, uh, trying to send it like I talked about earlier, two plays earlier. They got to stay ahead of the chains. Now they're off to a behind the chain situation. They got two tight ends here on first and goal from the 21. Rolling out to the right is Thomas. He throws it back across his body looking for Simon. It's nowhere near him. That's somebody that the Hilltoppers would love to get involved in this second half, the tight end, Josh Simon. Yeah, took a shot there. Interesting call on first and 20. Uh, taking a shot down the field. Great pursuit backside by the Chattanooga team. It was a real, really supposed to essentially be a, a roll right, fake, fake, uh, roll, fake, a half roll right, and throw the ball back across the field. Uh, and uh, great job by Chattanooga disrupting the timing of that play in the backfield and making for, uh, forcing Thomas to throw it before he wanted to. Here's a quarterback draw for Thomas. Thomas picks up a block from his running back, fights his way inside the 15 to make it third and about 12, or third and goal from the 12. Whether the Hilltoppers can pick up a first down inside the two, it looks like, as you get another look at that run from Thomas. Quarterback draw, it's been a staple for the Hilltoppers here this year uh, with both quarterbacks. I mean, they had. Pigram early, and now Thomas, he's got more of a bigger bat, bigger quarterback, and he can uh, finish downhill where Pigram, Pigram was kind of more of a shifty guy in the backfield. So it's become a staple here on the hill as the quarterback draws and quarterback runs. But third and 12, man, not a place you want to be, especially trailing in a game. Thomas scans the defense. He will check it down underneath the lane where it's broken up. Well, again, they missed, they, they guessed wrong again. Uh, credit to Lorenzo Ward and the defense of Chattanooga. Uh, really confusing, it looks like, the play callers, the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. They had a man concept, and, and Chattanooga was in cover two, zone coverage. And so you, you got to be able, as, your, as, a, as a quarterback, get off your first read, get off your second read, be patient, let those crossers set up. And, and Thomas was unable to do that because his guys weren't, weren't really setting up. So. Uh, Hats off to Lorenzo Ward. He's called a really good game here early. Braden Norvison hit from 32 earlier. This kick on fourth and 13, it's good as well. And he stays a perfect five for five in field goals this season. So with under five minutes to go in the third quarter, Chattanooga 10, West Kentucky six. For 57, third quarter, Chattanooga 10, Western Kentucky 6. Both teams have been able to trade field goals with each other so far to begin this third quarter. 
The rain has stopped a little bit. It's not coming down as hard as it was earlier. Temperatures dropped. Yeah, yesterday it was mid 80s. It is low 50s this evening. Nunnally brings it in inside the five. It's a fair catch. So first and 10 from the 25 coming up for the mocks. So Drayden Arnold hasn't completed a pass since the opening quarter, but they haven't really had to rely on him through the air so much today. They're getting it done on the ground, 113 yards rushing, led by their main running back star, Ford. He's got 67 yards on the ground. They're going to have to count on him here in the second half. I can guarantee you that. He's going to have to do a little bit better with job with his eyes and finding those rush lanes if he's going to throw it, especially on pass plays and everything's covered up. Uh, but he needs to, get, needs to get in rhythm here. I'm looking for a screen pass or something short to get him in rhythm here. He'll throw to start this drive, and he completes one for a gain of five. A little short slant route, three, three slant. Triple slant, call it easy, easy read for the quarterback. You just first guy's just holding the whole player, the guy that's go inside. Second player is really your guy's first read on time. Throws the ball out there, gets himself a completion. Hopefully that gets him kind of going and get him back in rhythm here, so they can be not less one dimensional and be two dimensional here going into this second half. That was the first catch of the game for Ornette, the Western Michigan transfer. Here's Ford on second down. He has a first down run as he banks his way up to the 35. Complimentary football. Short pass completion, get him six. Now they get a first down, second down on a run play outside zone. Shockingly enough, they've been running it all day long on Western's outside zone here. Good plays, good good, good blocks on the up offensive line, but great play by the running back getting in there and, and finding a, a little rush lane. And, figuring it out, so it does a good job. Good complimentary football by the Mox there. Pass, setting up the run, run, setting up the pass. That's when you know you're playing good offense. Making a check there, good, good job, solid. Good job. Now he steps up in the pocket and is just able to work his way back to the line of scrimmage. As I get older, I get more excited about pass protection checks. Because that's all we did in the NFL, it's just worked on the pass, pass checks and blitzes and stuff like that. So he made a protection check, uh, but just kind of his eyes again, his, eye, his eyes are going to his first read and then they're going to the rush. I think he, it, the, the rush sped him up. Yeah, he was aware of it, but it sped him up a little bit more. He wasn't ready to throw the ball when he wanted to be. And so cause for a little, little, get him to a little bit behind the sticks, got a chance here to get five and get back on top of, on schedule. Movement at the line of scrimmage. They're gonna get five. That time it was a defensive tackle. Jeremy Darwin just plowed over the right guard. So that is the third penalty against the Hilltoppers today. Again, that's how many they average per game. Here's a good look at it. Yeah, no doubt about that one at all. Yeah, that one's pretty obvious. That's about as obvious as that uh, that play we had that was under review earlier on, the completion and incompletion. The catch, non-catch for Henderson <laughs> yeah. on the sideline. Man coverage. On second and five, Arnold will launch one deep and he overshoots his target, Ornette. He has a catch earlier on this drive. Chattanooga looking for the flag. They will not get the yelling hanky to bail them out. They will not, but as a, as a you know, a guy with a quarterback mind, his eyes and his read were correct. They actually ran a zone play with a zone play up front with a man alert. And that fade route from the inside was the man alert. Hilltoppers played a clear man when you go three by zero, which means three receivers on one side, nobody on the other side. It's pretty easy to clean, clean some defense up a little bit. Good read by the quarterback there, but got to make that throw. On third and five, how about an inside pass to the tight end, James. He's bottled up, shy of the first down marker. Penalty like marker five. down around the 39. Looks like it's gonna be a hold here. I don't know if you, do you accept this grammar or do you say, hey, let we got him where we want him, fourth and three, we stopped him. Do you decline and just make him punt or? Decision it time help, for Tyson Helton. To accept it and try to play the field position battle a little bit and, or, and possibly give him another chance at 
picking up a play. They've done it. They've picked up a couple first first downs on third and longs on broken plays in this game. No signal yet from Chris Bynum. So there's your answer, Brandon. Tyson Helton electing to decline the penalty to make it fourth and two. Yeah, I think they're going. Yeah, Chattanooga is going for it. They're one for two today on fourth wow. down. Mine as well. It's your one and only game in the fall. Make the most of Big it. Big call here. It looks like zero. Hilltop are showing blitz. Not checking the checker on defense. They're going. Ford they're, is in the backfield. He should be throwing. He will throw on fourth and two. Flushed out to the right. Now he's going to pick it up with his feet, and he does. What a gutsy call by Rusty Wright. Rolling the dice, and his senior quarterback, Drayden Arnold, comes up big with a first down run. Great job. I'm surprised Clayton White didn't, didn't want to check the checker there. They got in the perfect look on offense. Uh, and still, still the Hilltopper is just better athletically than Chattanooga was in the receiving core and, and covered everything up. But a great play by, Clay, uh, by uh, Drayton making a play with his feet. Here's a handoff. What a lick to Ford. He holds on to the football. He got nailed by the linebacker, Eli Brown, the senior from right here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. That's a play that they needed on defense there. They had a little momentum shift, shut off the momentum with a huge hit and a great play to get the sideline going, give them that juice that they need. The defense has been out here for a long time, Graham. I don't know if that's going to play a little bit of a factor here later when we get down in the fourth quarter. Yeah, this will be play number eight for Chattanooga. They converted a fourth and two moments ago. Arnold being pressured, and he gets popped around the original line of scrimmage. Those are not the type of hits that you want to see your quarterback take. No, they're not. And I think he's relying on his feet a little bit too much, man. I know I know he had that big play on fourth down, but uh, got to trust the arm a little bit. He's got some receivers open that he's missing. He's, he's just coming off his first read and putting those heads, head down just a tick. He's got to be a little bit more patient and trust the play call. I do think they do need to do a little bit better job being creative on offense here. Big third down. It's third and 11. Chattanooga is four for 10 today on third down. Arnold all the time in the world, and it's a low foe. That would like to be one that, you know, he would like to have back, trying to fit one into Henderson. But even if Henderson makes that catch, he had a long way to go. I think he was just late. His eyes, it looked like he had a little trouble getting the ball in his hands when he caught that snap. He kind of dropped back, but he was in his eyes were in the right spot. That's read number one. Got to hit that one. Yards after catch. You want to get you want to get yards after catch. You have to be accurate as a quarterback. And what that means is if you're running a crosser, you got to get that ball right in that face mask. Let him catch it and run. This is punt number three for Boring. And it skips at the 30. Remember last time it hit a hilltopper and Chattanooga was able to recover inside the 15. Now it rolls out of bounds around the 30 with 12 seconds remaining in the third quarter. So Chattanooga holding on to a 10-6 lead over West Kentucky Hilltoppers trying to take the lead for the first time today when we return. West Kentucky has first and 10 from their own 27 with 12 seconds remaining in the third. Play action. Thomas, he's going to take a shot. He's got Tinsley open and he drops it in. What a throw from Thomas connecting to Tinsley. That's a gain of 33. That thing has been set up for a while. I don't know if you guys remember from the earlier in the broadcast. They run a little run pass option with a little hitch route into the field. Well, this time, hitch route, not so much. Hitch and go. First play. First big play passing for the Hilltoppers. That's exciting, and that's good to see. Thomas to the field. Great job. Great throw. Uh, leads him a little more to touchdown, but hey, we'll take it. Good good throw by KT. Hopefully, that gets him in rhythm. 
Start of the fourth quarter, first and 10. Tyrell Pickram is in a quarterback, and he slings one incomplete at the five, looking for Tinsley. So that previous pass, that 38-yard completion, belongs to Tyrell Pickram. He's been dealing with some turf toe, did not play at all last week. He got the start two weeks ago against Marshall and got yanked in favor of Thomas. Looks like this was a, a case of Helton looking for some energy on his offense uh, a little bit. Coach Helton wants to uh, find some energy, try and throw in a, the pig room and uh, takes a shot in his first play. Two shots back to back. He'll throw again. The ball had some heat on it to Burt. Burt, his third catch of the game. Run pass option there again. He's throwing it on the run pass option. Any cor the corners, the rule is on these RPOs when you're to the field making those throws. If the corner is over five yards, six yards, based upon your receiver, when we had Taewon Taylor back in the day, if I remember I threw it to him one time on fourth and one, and the guy was pressed up, and Jeff Brown about killed me on the sideline. I'm not gonna lie, I thought he was gonna <laughs> kick me out of the game, but. But it's just really a lot of trust. Looks like they got a, they're got they giving access to the field again here. Maybe a little blitz coming from Chattanooga. Quarterback keeper Pigram is absolutely nailed by Jay Person, the sophomore from Cleveland, Tennessee. What a hit. Big hit. Again, like I said, there's pressure coming coming to the boundary. So Pigram really couldn't give that ball. His, his read man there from one guy, went from one guy to two un, un, unblocked guys. And uh, that's the... Result of that. Offense staying on the field on fourth and nine. Hilltoppers one for one on fourth down today. They have converted over 70% on fourth down this season. Pigram on fourth and nine steps up in the pocket. Now he goes back behind the line of scrimmage. He will sling one out of bounds. So the Hilltoppers go for it on fourth and nine, and the Chattanooga defense comes up with another big play. Fantastic play. Looked like the number one read on that play was a little drive route that was way about four yards short of the first down. I think if Pigram would have hit his back foot, took a hitch up, and threw that drive route, I think receiver would have made a, I don't know what it was, I think it was Tinsley that would have made a great play, just kind of accurate ball would have got him. I think it would have got him the first, but when he scrambled out of there, Tinsley kind of took it up the middle of the field and no one was covering him. I thought he was going to chuck it up there as far as he could, but he didn't do it, and uh, credit Chatt Chattanooga hanging tough. Here's Ford with a carry. So 13-15 remaining in the game. Chattanooga with a 10-6 lead. Mock scored on their opening drive of the game. And they've been very impressive. They've been very sound uh, on offense and defense in this game. Well-coached Chattanooga team. Very impressed what Rusty Wright has done uh, with this team. Uh, really not having many games at all. One and only in the fall, eight coming up in the spring as Price is stopped after a gain of two. Well, coming into this game, Western Kentucky 19 and five all time versus non-conference, non-power five teams, including 11 and three at home. The hiccups have been the last two times they have played a team in this situation, non-conference, non-power five, they have lost both of those games to Maine two years ago and Central Arkansas last year. We were doing both of those in that last game, too. So we're in familiar territory here down the fourth quarter. Yeah, you know Chattanooga would love to make that three in a row. West Kentucky has other ideas. Here's a big third and three. Handoff to Ford, and Ford lunges to the 44. Ford on the area. And this is first good down. for a first down. They had some miscommunication here. A, lot of, a little confusion on the defensive line. I think they're... Getting a little tired on defense. They've been out in the field a long time. Time of possession is pretty pretty even, but at the same time, um, I think it's wearing down on them have, being able to be dominant in the run game. It wears that defensive line out. They're not just pass rushing and getting free access. They're, they're actually trying to push them backwards, and you can kind of see that there's been a little bit of a uh, wind being, being blown here on the defensive side for the Hilltoppers. Here's Gino Appleberry, his third carry of the day, results in a pickup of two. 
Appleberry, the Western Kentucky transfer. Rusty Wright recruiting him out of high school when Coach Wright was at Georgia State. He's from Georgia. Stayed on him and now gets to coach him at Chattanooga. I guarantee he was given some some secrets of the trade for the Hilltoppers this well, for the past week here, trying to get any edge they can, and so far it's so good. On second and eight, here's a double reverse back to the quarterback. Arnold looking for his tight end, James, who makes the leaping catch. There's the trickery we were talking about, a reverse flea flicker. I've seen it all, folks. Uh, back to the wide receiver. He really wasn't even that wide open, but great throw by, by Arnold just to give his, his guy a chance, put it on top of his head, but like we say as a quarterback, just throw it on top of the, the receiver's head, tight end in this situation. Makes a great play, giving him a chance to make a play. Great energy, great call for that time of the time. Third catch for the tight end, James. Again, he was a quarterback in Juco. Here's a handoff to Ford on first down. That's good for about three. We asked the offensive coordinator, Joe Pizzo, what did you see to allow Chris James to make that transition from quarterback to tight end? And he said, honestly, we just needed bodies at tight end. And he's a big enough kid that he can play that position and boy what a job he's done he has done an amazing job and just a little bit of a, a glimpse of his ball skills right there had to kind of adjust to the ball and a uh, big play by Chattanooga see if they can get six out of this drive when they got a little bit of momentum pushing their side that's Nunley in the slots on the bottom on second and eight here's a shot to Nunley he's got a step and he can't come up with it not only that time working against Trey Meadows, there is a penalty marker down around the line of scrimmage. Little late, good job with his eyes holding safeties, but he was hot. I think he got rid of that ball quicker than he wanted to, even he was gonna be even later, but great, great job recovery by Meadows, making sure he's making. It's a hold against Chattanooga. Just their second penalty today. And for the first and only game of the fall for Chattanooga, that's awfully impressive too. Absolutely. Hey, Coach said he wanted to play a clean, uh, as clean of a game as he possibly could have played. Know that there was going to be a little rust coming out, uh, knowing that it was going to be their first game of the season, first game, only game of the fall camp. So fall season. So uh, very impressive. With only one penalty. Nunnally is off the field on the second and eighteen. Here's Ford, Ford not much there at all to bring up third and a mile. Well, you got two downs to get, so you want to just get half here. You can probably have a chance to go for it on fourth down, but uh, up four points, uh, three really doesn't do you much. I guess it ties the game rather than gives Helltoppers the lead if they score. So you got two downs to get, you, you can utilize all four here. Uh, talking earlier, Head coach, he didn't have too much confidence in his kicker, so we'll be excited to see if he attempts a field goal or if he plays it for uh, a punt. They will hand it off on third and 17 and going nowhere. It's Ford. So with that play call, you do wonder if they were considering going for it on fourth down no matter what. Yeah, I think they were. I think they have, they're in four down territory. It looks like they're gonna go for it again here. This is a long, wait, look for a shot. Turn it into a punt if he throws an interception. Chattanooga two for three on fourth down a day. Hilltoppers in man coverage, two man. They're dropping out. Arnold bows across his body and he had James and James can't come up with it. Wow. All, all go. Just just didn't make, what an unbelievable play by Arnold here, rolling right, throwing left. Uh, just had a drop. I mean, they, like, like I said, they're just gonna throw a shot as deep as you can. And man, he makes a great play on the flea flicker and just drops that one. Big play by the Hilltoppers, catch a break. So after the turnover on downs, Pigram stays in at quarterback and he hands it off to Moses and Moses might've lost a yard on first down. Oh, 
So second and 11. Offensively today, West Kentucky just 208 total yards of offense. Their season low is 248 in the opener against Louisville. Wow. Car four. Pigram fires low. And now you look up in a blink of an eye, it's third and 11 for the Hilltoppers. Not much you have to, you, they're in the perfect call there. Uh, just gotta make a throw, make an accurate throw. Just being there, I know it's tough being a backup quarterback. I, I, I know I played as a backup quarterback in the NFL, so I, I know what it's like to be a backup quarterback and you just gotta find a spark. You know, I think that takes a special skill, Hill. Let's see what he does here on third and 12. Chattanooga only brings three. Pigram surveys the defense. He takes a shot. He's got Simon wide open, and he drops it. His defender fell down, and Simon, if he catches it, he just struts into the end zone. He just walks. Defender fell down in zero coverage. Incidental contact and all. I mean, my goodness, great play by Pigram. Just trying to make a play. But Simon, Simon, I think that's a... Uh, I think that's a mix of a lot of things. Kid's kind of been frustrated, trying to really hard to impressing to make a play just because he hasn't really gotten a, any looks uh, today. So, wow, that's a big, big, big play for the Hilltoppers. But uh, they, they, Chattanooga gets out of there unhinged. The punt down inside the 15, another excellent punt from John Haggerty. So with 7.06 remaining in the game, Chattanooga with a football up by four. So after the punt from Western Kentucky, it is first and 10 for Chattanooga. Mock starting this drive from their own 12. Chattanooga today, 218 yards of total offense. They start this drive with a handoff to Ford and he spins out of one tackle and then falls to the 16. Get ready for a lot of Ford here to end this game for Chattanooga. I, I, I think they kind of should transfer into four minute mode here. But I do think the Hilltoppers are ready for a double move, ready for a shot. I know they, try, they did one with the Reverse flea flicker, but I really think they're ready for a shot. They're playing so hard press on the outside that I think they're 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 primed and ready for a shot play. Let's see if we see it. Here's carry number 25 for Ford, and he'll bring up a third and manageable for the Mox. 40 rushes for Chattanooga today. 40 for 140. That's just a product of uh, trying to keep the Hilltoppers out of rhythm. Doing a good job with the quarterback runs um, and, and really pass plays that have turned into run plays. I think it's a little bit more one-sided just because of that, but uh, big third and three backed up for field position purposes alone. You don't want to give the ball back to the Hilltoppers. Chattanooga five for 13 on third down and Arnold gets leveled. A flag is thrown as Arnold just got crushed back at the 10. That could be a targeting. It's Eli Brown again. He had a huge hit in the third quarter. It's a holding penalty against Chattanooga, and this penalty will be declined. Big play. Defense is bailing this team out. Offense has got to feed off that energy. I know it's it's hard as a football as a football team. You know, offense and defense they become two separate identities sometimes. Sometimes I feel like. Uh, maybe some of the defender, defensive players need to go over to the offensive side and get them a little juice because Hilltoppers really needed a spark here. Hopefully that was the spark they needed to turn this game around. Uh, big play. This will be the fourth punt for Gabe Boring. Do the Hilltoppers come after this? Boring five yards out of his own end zone. This will be a short punt, but it takes a friendly Chattanooga roll into Hilltopper territory out of bounds at the 46. Yeah, that was a good confidence building for the punter there. I thought he's had a rough day. He needed that roll. It's a big spot for this Hilltopper offense with 529 left in the game, trailing 10 to 6. We've seen both quarterbacks, but it's mostly been 
pig room in the second half. It has, and I think Coach just needed a spark uh, on offense. Uh, I think they got a little stagnant with uh, Thomas back there, and they just needed a spark bringing in the backup quarterback. Had a spark early, completed a real long pass. Could have had another one at the opportunity of it. Let's see if he takes advantage of the good field position on this one. Here's Walker. Walker with some running room. Picks up seven. Walker really inv heavily involved like we thought at the top of the hour. Uh, we, we thought he was going to be a, a, a big factor in this game. He has been. He's been a bright spot for this offense that's really been struggling. Uh, need to give him the ball even more. He's averaging 6.4 a carry. I don't know. I'm, I'm not really good at math, but 6.4. If you do that three times, that's the first down every time. They feed it to him again, and he's greeted in the hole by Ty Beck. Ty Beck is having himself a game. The junior from Saudi Daisy, Tennessee. His father, Troy, was a Southern Conference Defensive Player of the Year at Chattanooga as well. Interesting stat here. Coming into the game, I thought Chattanooga would be the more balanced team. I thought they would uh, try to run past 50% of the time. They ran at 42. They've have 19 attempts. Hilltoppers have been the most balanced team on the field today. Here's third and two for the Hilltoppers. Quarterback run for Pigram, and Pigram surges forward, and he will be awfully close to the first down line to gain. Chattanooga thinks they stopped him short. They're going for it anyway. Let's see if they at least measure it. They will not fourth down. measure it. It's fourth in less than a yard. I would say repeat call. They're going to go quarterback run here no matter what, I think. In my opinion, my, I'm aggressive like Jeff Brom is, and so I'm thinking play action pass, knowing that you think everybody else thinks you're going to throw a deep one. Big room is under center. Quarterback sneak. He has it easily as he backpedals his way to the 41. So he picks up about four yards on the quarterback sneak, and that keeps the drive alive for Western Kentucky. Bigram did not play at all in the first half. He's been the quarterback in the second half. He's two for six through the air. Need to get something out of here on first down. Stay ahead of the ch chains, especially late in this game. Play action, Pigram plants his feet and fires and zips one into his tight end in the red zone here for the Hilltoppers. Here's the connection they've been looking for. That's gotta be feel good for Simon. He had the huge drop on the last drive. He's not gonna drop this one. Yeah, just across him. A deep cross, a staple of this offense for Tyson Helton. Uh, Pigram does a good job being on time. Accurate ball. A little, little, little juice after the catch. There's a player down on the field for Chattanooga. Injury timeout will take one as well. 2.49 remaining in the fourth quarter. Chattanooga holding on to a 10-6 lead. Two forty-nine fourth quarter. Chattanooga ten, Western Kentucky six. Hilltoppers marching with the football. Pigram trying to be the hero in the second half here for the Hilltoppers. Hands it off to Walker. Walker plows his way for a short pickup on first down. Hilltoppers, obviously, I'll say the obvious. They need a touchdown here. They're in four down potential, but put your mind as a quarterback. Uh, you got to be aggressive, but you got to stay ahead of the chains. You have to make good, smart decisions. You have, your, your, your clock is going to be just a little bit quicker the uh, closer you get to the end zone. The, quick, the, the closer you are to the end zone, the faster the clock in your head has to go. And so you have to understand that rushers, uh, you can't wait for, play, uh, for routes to develop. You have to throw it on time to score touchdowns. It's got to be precise. Pigram, all the time in the world to throw, rolls out right, picks up a block from his tight end, Simon, and then just throws it out of bounds. Had a, had a man concept there that guessed wrong. Had a man concept, There's got a zone. Very late flag that was thrown around the line of scrimmage. 
I don't know what this could be. Maybe it looks like either holding or roughing the passer. It was awfully late. It was thrown by our head referee, Chris Bynum. Wow. wow. That's a big call. That's a big call. Rusty Wright is upset again after that late flag that was known. Haven't seen a replay yet. Here it, it is. is. Just hands to the helmets. Yeah. You see that in the NFL all the time. I, th I thought the play was, maybe I'm ignorant, but I thought that if he was out of the pocket, that wasn't a call, but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. So after that costly penalty, it's first and goal. The ball is at the six. Bracket coverage is zero. Here's Walker. Walker surges to the goal line. He is stopped around the two. Probably the best thing for the Hilltoppers here is just to make them burn their timeouts. You almost don't want to score too quickly. Chattanooga has all three timeouts remaining. You get a look at that run from Walker as he's approaching 100 yards on the ground. We'll take a timeout as well. Second and goal from the two when we return. Second and goal for Western Kentucky, looking for their first lead of the game. Walker, the back in the backfield. I'd like to apologize to the viewers. That was a uh, hands to the face is always a call. Thank you, Cameron Clemens, for the text message. Quality control guy for the Oakland, well, Vegas Raiders. Quarterback keeper, Pegram off the right side, not much there at all. Might have lost a yard. And a timeout taken by Chattanooga. That's their second with a minute 38 remaining in the game. Whew. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. If I'm a playing quarterback, you got four downs. So you got four downs to get what you want here. Fourth and you got two day two plays to get a touchdown. It's actually you know, it's a risk and reward. Yes, you can, you know, run the butt, run the ball, get the ball in the end zone, and they have some time to counter. Uh, but at the same time, this might be best case scenario for the Hilltoppers uh, if they are able to score on these next two plays. Offensively, what are you thinking here if you're the Hilltoppers? I Me, mean, you have a quarterback that can run, so you give him a chance to be a passer or a rusher, turn him into a rusher. So I think you cut the field down in half for him, take a little boot action, maybe not, not a play action, because it's a little bit faster, but you gotta get him on the move. Let this, this kid either make a play running the ball or throwing it. All right, here we go, third and goal from the three. Man coverage, zero. Here's Walker, Walker gets greeted at the line of scrimmage. It's fourth and goal. Ran it three plays in a row, man. I don't, I don't like, I, I really don't like the call. You got man coverage, you got exactly what you want. You're playing a division one double A team. Your skill guys on paper should be better than their skill guys. Let them have a chance to win one on one. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what he does on fourth down. I think he's got to throw it. He hasn't thrown it yet, so we'll see. That timeout was taken by Western Kentucky. Two timeouts left for the Hilltoppers with a minute 23 remaining in the game. Chattanooga holding on to a 10-6 lead as you get another look at that last run from Gage Walker. Great, great play by Chattanooga. Great call, zero. I mean, they've run it every play down here, trying to blow up the runs. So I'm, I'm excited to see what Tyson Helton has up his sleeve here. Maybe something that he hasn't ran before or something. You're in, you're in danger of running something that we ran uh, against Marshall to win that game. It was called North Dart double return, East Dart double return here, trying to get it. All it is is a faking slant to those outside guys, pull them back out. We'll see what he does here. Uh, on fourth down, big play. Get, this is the game here. Pegram and Walker in the backfield. Pegram. 
We got a whistle and this play will be blown dead or was a timeout taken? Timeout was taken by Chattanooga. That's their last timeout. Thank God because I think he, I don't think he had it. He ran a little play action quarterback run, but I think, I don't think he was going to have it there. Good timeout, smart veteran play by Rusty Wright. Uh, calling, making sure he saw the look, make him have to think about it for a second. They stay with the same player or are they going to go do something completely different? I, if I'm the Hilltoppers, I'm getting to three by zero. Why what, Why do I do that? Three by zero, nub tight end, three, three receivers, speed receivers to the field. I would do that because it just identifies that for that quarterback. If you have a corner on the other side on the tight end, that's zone coverage. If they have corners over, that's man coverage. Just makes it very clear for him so that he can make a smart decision on time fast, as fast as he can, especially real tight down here when windows are a little bit tighter. So uh, I'm looking to see if they're going to throw the ball, they're going to run the ball. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt a, a, a full spread quarterback draw here if I'm them, but I, if I'm Chattanooga, I got a counter for that. They've, they've done a good job in the red zone today with the Hilltopper team that's been really good in the red zone. We'll see. This is the game. Chattanooga has led the entire game. Defense trying to come up with another huge stop. Hilltoppers have fourth and goal from the four. Who do the Hilltoppers go to with the game on the line? Pigram, he's going to throw in the end zone, looking for a bird, and he makes the catch. Touchdown, Western Kentucky with the lead for the first time today. Wow. With all this offensive football, all this, this schemes and these offensive minds, Hilltoppers just say, hey, we're going to get into a big 22 personnel, and we're just going to run a fade. Great ball, great adjustment. Just give this guy a chance. Like I said two plays earlier, this is Division One. this is D1AA, no disrespect, but on paper they should have better athletes than the, than the opposer, so great call. Uh, I think they kind of just kind of got a 50-50 ball out there. Said our guys better than yours, and at that play they were. Second touchdown reception of the season for Craig Bird Jr. This is a crucial extra point. It's up and it's good, and it is now a three-point lead for Western Kentucky with a minute 21 left in the game. And remember, Chattanooga is out of timeouts. That they are. What a sequence, though. Chattanooga, Western Kentucky ran it three times in a row. And they throw it, a fade on fourth and goal, and it works. This is probably be the best spring game you could ever imagine. I mean, I'll tell you what, for the Chattanooga coaching staff, playing in a spring game like this where you can have all these different elements of the game, going through adversity, sudden change, backed up, finding a way to make a play on offense in the red zone, make a play on defense in the red zone. You really can't coach that going into your regular season. So I'm very impressed still to this day with this Chattanooga team uh, and even where they're at in this game. Uh, 121, we'll kind of see what they can do. Now they got another situation of football, of being able to run a two minute drill against somebody that they don't practice against every day. So I'm excited to see that. Corey Munson will kick it deep. Nunnally and Summers are back deep to return for Chattanooga. Kicks it to Nunnally. Nunnally brings it in and he's going to return it. Nunnally across the 20. He has some room on the near side here. Nunnally across midfield. Nunnally has the kicker to beat down the sideline and Nunnally scores. Wow. What a play. You want to talk about a kid, all these records beating T.O., and he takes back a kick uh, with under, with just over a minute left in this game. What a special teams play. I tell you what, the special teams has won this game for Chattanooga if they are able to hold on. Wow. I've seen it all. He had the kicker months in the beat, picked up a block from Summers, and Bryce Nunnally. The senior from Cleveland, Tennessee, takes one all the way to the house. Wow, what a play. Now, now they're reviewing this. Now you're the Hilltoppers. That's a fact though, fantastic play. But if you're the Hilltoppers now and you're thinking about, okay, we just won the game, do you, 
I, I know you, you, Pigram's done a good job. I know he's able to run the ball. He's really good, an asset in the run game. But it's been kind of proven a couple times before that uh, Thomas can throw the ball just a little bit better than Pigram can Demi, down the field. What do you do? I mean, do you put KT back in the game, Graham, or do you just kind of have to ride out Pigram and see what happens here? We have not seen Thomas in the second half. He threw it 17 times in the first half. He was 12 of 17 for 59 yards. He has the big arm. Pigram is four for eight in the second half. So they are reviewing that last kickoff return for Nunnally. They have yet to put the score or that touchdown on the scoreboard. There's a minute 21 left in the game. Chattanooga is out of timeouts. And this has been a lengthy review for Chris Bynum. He's the referee, the replay official is Britt Choate. I'm assuming they're, if he stepped out, I mean, that's the only thing I can really think of is, is what they're reviewing. Here's another look at the kick return. I mean, it looks like he's ready to return it. He, he knows he's gonna return this thing for a touchdown. He's got it in his eye. No fair catch was signaled. Yeah, I'm not sure. Chattanooga thinks that's what they are reviewing to see if Nunnally signaled for a fair catch or not. He clearly did not, as you saw. After they put the replay on the Jumbotron, the entire Chattanooga team threw up the touchdown signal. But yeah. this review has been going on for a very Ever. long time. Very. We've had some weird reviews in this game. We have a, a fair catch, an unfair catch, and a clear incompletion that was reviewed, that was called a catch, and it was a, kind of took a little bit to do that. So I don't know what they could possibly be reviewing it. I'm assuming it's just the fair catch of his arm. I, yeah. I don't know. I he no never, never signaled fair catch. In live, it did not look like that he stepped out of bounds. We got something here. Hey. Looks like they might be. Usually when these things take this long, they're overturning. So I don't know. A different angle. Wow. They said a wow. fair catch was signaled. Holy cow. Wow. I've never seen that before. I in my have life. never. Rusty Wrights has every reason in the world to be as upset as he is. Wow. They said an up back called the signal. Not even the guy returning the ball. The up back is the one that they got, they spotted calling the signal. I don't. I have never seen that before in my life. I have not either. And a penalty has just been called on Rusty Wright. What a turn of events. Wow. Wow, that's right. It was it was hard to see on the replays. It was you couldn't really see any other person other than the return man, Bryce Nunnally. Wow. Well, if you're Chattanooga here, Brandon, they still have time. Yeah, you got They don't go. have any timeouts. I know you, it's going to be hard, but you have to you have to you just gotta, bounce gotta, back you, you here. Got, you got to rally the troops, and you got to. That's a bad penalty, but a head coach you can't do that. You got to at least give yourself a chance at this thing. Game's not over. Arnold will throw one out of bounds on first down. So it is second and 22. The ball is at the 13-yard line. So I think you got to. You got to. Again, I, this is just another example of kind of harnessing that energy a little bit. I know a lot of it's an emotional game. But if I'm a Chattanooga coaching staff, I, I got to say, hey, we got still got a chance to win this game. We got a minute 17 in college football. That's eternity. Arnold throws it. There is Nunnally. Nunnally tackled after a gain of about six. The clock is running with under a minute to go now. Down. 
Man coverage. On third and 15, miscommunication that time over the head of his intended target, McKinnon. And it's fourth and 15 with 48 seconds. Here's a different angle of the kickoff return. You see the up man, that was Summers, and that is what the officials see right there in the bottom right corner. The officials see that and determine that a fair catch was called. Wow. And that is how it was overturned. Wiped out a 103 yard kickoff Holy return cow. for a touchdown. Wow. So on fourth and 15, over the middle, and it's dropped. Looking for Nunnally. Nunnally thought pass interference. With 44 seconds left in the game, the Hilltoppers will have the football. We've got some jibber jabbering with the head coach and defensive players here. It's, it's gotten a little bit ugly here. The motions are running high. After, yeah, it was a huge emotional sequence after the kickoff return by Nenneley. Initially, thought that he scored, wiped out due to a replay that a fair catch was signaled. Chattanooga goes three and outs or go for it on fourth and a mile, can't convert. And if you're the Hilltoppers here, you just take the knee and go back to the locker room with a victory. Wins a win. Wow, what a game. What a fourth quarter. What a last five minutes of the game. Coach Helton always talks about the last five minutes of the game is right when the real game starts. And I think the Hilltoppers did a good job of uh, executing when they needed to on offense, but their defense is something they have to uh, really be excited about here on the Hill. Just that defense is really special. And so um, it looks like we're not going to have a shake of hands here in this game. Hilltoppers look like they're going to shake, wanted to shake, but they didn't. So. Looks like they have to get one more playoff, but in Western Kentucky, they got a tough one uh, coming up next. They will be on the road at BYU. He was ranked in the top 15, and this is the one and only game for Chattanooga. Or that might be the final play of the game. Game clock and play clock are almost identical. And there it is, triple zero. So the final score in a wild one, Western Kentucky 13, Chattanooga 10. Biggest takeaway? Biggest takeaway was Hilltoppers defense. I think they have some trouble on offense. They got a quarterback situation they still haven't figured out. I don't know if that's a good thing, a bad thing. I know you got two guys that can play the, the, the position at a high level, um, but I think they got to figure out some stuff on offense. But a positive is that their defense is really good. They're legit. They played it. Played very, very well. They settled their, settled down into the game and really did a good job in the second half, shutting them down and shutting them out. So uh, Chattanooga, on the other hand, uh, they go back to work, li lifting weights and getting off the field. So um, excited to see what they do for the rest of the season. Uh, emotional spring game. Uh, hopefully they can watch the film and get better from it. Uh, but wow, did the Hilltoppers get bailed out of this one uh, over a, a, a call that we'll be talking about all week. So for my partner, Brandon Dowdy, I'm Graham Doty saying so long from Bowling Green, Kentucky, where the final score, the Hilltoppers knock off the Chattanooga Mocs 13-10. All games airing on the ESPN Network, streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.